Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video, let us look at using Amazon's Simple Queue service in a Spring Boot application. SQS is a distributed queuing system which gives access to a message queue that you can use to store messages while waiting for the end system to process it. There are two types of SQS queues, standard and first-in, first-out queues. Let us first create our queue in the AWS console before going to the Spring Boot application. In the AWS console, you will see the simple queue service under the application integration category. Click on simple queue service and it will take you to the simple queue service console. Click on get started now and give a name for your queue. I'm going to name it as Spring Boot. SQS. Like I mentioned earlier, there are two types of queues available. One is the standard and the second one is the first in first out queue. The standard queue guarantees that the message will be delivered at least once. But if there is a high volume of transaction in a distributed system, message might get delivered more than one time. This might cause a confusion in the system. In order to avoid this issue, you can opt for a first-in, first-out queue. As the name suggests, the message will be delivered in a first-in, first-out manner. It delivers the message only once. Messages are made available only till the consumer processes it. Once the consumer processes the message, it will be deleted from the system. This queue mechanism eradicates the duplicate transactions. For this example, I'm going to create a simple standard queue. So I'm going to select standard queue here and click on quick create queue. All right, my queue has been created and you could see here the endpoint URI for the queue. Copy this and let us jump to our Spring Boot application. In this example, we are going to use the Spring Cloud AWS dependencies to talk to our queue system. So Spring Cloud AWS gives you a set of dependencies that you can make use of and it almost simplifies a lot of logic that you write in order to speak with an AWS service. So this document is really useful if you want to make a lot of research into how to use an AWS service in your Spring Boot or Spring Cloud applications. So we are going to look into the messaging now and we are going to follow the steps of what is mentioned here in order to send a message to an SQS. Let us jump to our Spring Boot application. I'm here at the Spring Toolsuits IDE. Let's quickly create a Spring Boot application. Click on File, New, Spring Startup Project. Give a name for your project. Click on Next. Search for AWS. You have the AWS Code, AWS Messaging, and AWS JDBC. We are going to use the AWS Core and the AWS Messaging. AWS JDBC is for RDS. Then select the Web Starter Dependency and click on Finish. I have already created a project here for the SQS implementation. Let us quickly take a look at our form.xml. All right, like I mentioned earlier, the form.xml has only three dependencies in it. One is a starter web, the other is the starter AWS core and we have the AWS messaging dependency in it. Now let us quickly go on to our configuration application.yaml. In the application.yaml, Spring Cloud gives you a property key definition that you need to use in order to auto configure multiple things. Let me quickly open up the document. Here is the set of keys that I mentioned cloud.aws.credentials access key, cloud.aws.credentials secret key, and then you can also configure the region by automatically, or you can give a static uh, region. So when you do a cloud.aws region.auto equal to true, it determines automatic region reduction based on your EC2 metadata service. So this is one, something that you can make use of when you deploy your Spring Boot jar in the EC2. But when you work on your local, make sure that you change this to false or else it will result in an error in your local machine. So let us jump back to the IDE and now let us take a look at this key. 
we have the cloud dot region dot static which is us east one i mentioned the auto as false then i have the credentials then i have the endpoint uri for my sqs let us jump to the sqs config in the sqs config just like what we did in the dynamo db example we are going to create a amazon sqs client builder and it's going to have only the region and the credentials in it it's not going to use the sqs endpoint like what we did in the dynamo db the sqs endpoint will be directly used in the controller or in the service where you're going to make a call to the sqs and send a message so in order to make use of the sqs uh, there is a new template given to us by the spring cloud aws dependency which is the message queuing template so once you create the amazon sqs async bean you pass in this value to the message queuing template once this bean is created you are almost set to send a message to sqs let us jump to a controller what i have here is a simple risk controller i have auto wired the queue messaging template here and i have a very simple get mapping which is going to send a message when i access the sqs uh, uri inside the send message i have a queue messaging template dot send and i'm going to pass in the sqs endpoint from the property key and i'm going to build my message here using the message builder the message builder can have payload message attributes headers etc so in this case i'm going to have only a simple string hello from spring boot to be sent so let us quickly run this project and let us try to access the uri and let us see whether the message gets successfully delivered to sqs or not okay the project is up and running now let us go to our browser and let us hit this uri Looks like the browser has loaded. Now let us go to the SQS management console. Let me do a quick refresh here. We have a message received here. So click on queue actions, view or delete messages, and start polling for messages. Do you see the hello from Spring Boot delivered here? Click on more details. You will see the details about the message and the message attributes that are coming with the message these are the default attributes but you can set your own attributes here so now let us go back and let us try to access this message since this message is not accessed by a consumer this will be stored in the uh, queue in the amazon console once the message is accessed this message will be deleted from the queue In order to access a message, Spring Cloud AWS gives you a simple annotation. Just like your Kafka listener, you have a SQS listener. This SQS listener will take in the queue name. So the queue name is going to be Spring Boot SQS. Give the queue name here. All right, this method is going to take in a string because our payload is going to have a string in it. And since the SQS listener has been annotated on top of this method, the string will be automatically assigned to this particular variable and you can easily fetch this value. For example, if you are an object, right, you can do the object directly like this and get the values of the object from the queue. In this case, it's going to be a string. So it's, I have named it as string message. Save this, restart the server. All right, the Tomcat server is up. Let me widen up the console here. Let's go to our browser. And let us try to access.
access this URL again. Okay, just load it. Let's go to the console, do a refresh. The message is gone because the message has been delivered to the consumer or the receiver. Now let's go and take a look at our console. All right, the console is here, and you could see here message from SQS hello from Spring Boot. So our SQS listener is listening for a message from the SQS queue, and it is giving to us the value. With this, we come to the end of this video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed watching this video. Please subscribe for more such videos. Thank you.